I think it started with the death of my brother. He died at 32, and he's four years older than me. So I was 28 when he died, and I had realized that I'd spent a lot of my life not fully doing all of the things that I wanted to do. Like there was so much on my life list that I really wanted to accomplish, and I felt like I was running out of time. And I decided at that time that I was going to just make everything happen, you know, and make all the opportunities I wanted for myself and just work extra hard and be extra focused and accomplish everything. I was, um, you know, going to my full-time day job, um, working part-time on the side and trying to start my own business, which was an arts and entertainment paper. I'd get up in the morning and I'd go throughout my day and there was always lots of things happening and people I had to talk to and things I had to accomplish and I'd work until late at night and everything was really physical. My job was at a gym so I was like working out all the time and then I was teaching dancing and then I was reporting on local events and then I was building my business plan and writing my newspaper and interviewing people and photographing things and totally just completely busy. And then um, everything fell apart. I couldn't keep writing or typing or working or anything. Like, I had to stop teaching dancing. And I couldn't rely on my, myself. And it was devastating because I had put so much into everything that I was making when my body started to fail and fail me completely. It, it just, it was, it was devastating because I felt like all of that work was just going to be gone and disappear and, and I didn't know what to do and I felt like a complete failure because I had such big dreams and here I was not able even to type anymore, you know, I couldn't even at times like when I was at the worst of it, I couldn't even, you know, hold a fork to feed myself. I couldn't hold onto a cup. I couldn't get out of bed for days and days and days. And when my body was so spasmed up at the worst of it, I couldn't even stand up and walk to go to the bathroom by myself. And I'd have to roll out of bed and kind of commando crawl my way to the bathroom. And to sit down, I'd have to like, push myself up on all of the things around me and sit, you know, and then I'd have to drag myself off of everything and then crawl my way back. You know, like you can't get comfortable. There was no such thing as a comfortable position. You know, I would be trying to sleep on this side and my foot would be hurting. I'd be trying to sleep on this side and my arm would be hurting. And the whole time, my whole entire spinal column and all my nerves, it felt like my nerves were on fire all the time and it was impossible to get comfortable. So the only thing that I really found that I could do was to distract my mind from it. And so I started getting lost in virtual reality and I'd be just there with my laptop and experiencing the physicality of the world through my avatar. And I'd get animations that moved as close as to how I, I used to be able to move and, and, it, and I would just live through that. And then sometimes I think that that visualization of being able to see me busy, active, doing and moving again kind of helped maybe even bring me back to that place. And I think that sometimes, but I, I don't know if it, I don't know if it's true, but I think it might have helped. After going to the doctor and him finally deciding that I had fibromyalgia, I realized that I needed to do a lot of research myself to find out what this is because no one was going to heal me but me and I'm the one who's completely responsible for my body and for my well-being. I think it like almost a year may have even gone by. I think it was a year because I had to stop publishing my paper and everything and I, I went into this, I thought about it part way through that year as a time of gestation where I had to conserve all my energy and build up my health so that I could then go back out in the world. And so I just became dormant. You know, it was like this dormant period. And there was just a point where 
the pain lessened, the spasms were getting less and less. I was on super healthy protein smoothies and taking my greens and tons of an antioxidants and digestive enzymes and anti-inflammatory enzymes and making sure that I was completely gluten free and not eating anything that was going to inflame or irritate my body. I was trying to reset my system. When I started to be able to move again, I started just dancing for myself. Um, just dance. You, you don't need a lot of space. I would just dance in my room by myself, doing very gentle, smooth movements. When I was moving, I would really just focus on letting go and just letting the movement flow through me and not try to control it or have any tension in my body because the whole approach to my life now is to not hold on to tension. Everything just has to flow through me all the time. Because as soon as I start to accumulate and carry stress, it starts to hurt. So I just have to continually be letting go. And uh, I was really grateful that I was a belly dancer because it's such a loose and fluid and graceful and joyous way of expressing yourself. And it, I think it brought me back around to being well again and being confident again to go out and build my life again. I still have days where, you know, you wake up in the morning and all my joints are on fire and I get this huge wave of fear crashing into me. Like, what does this mean? What's going to happen? Because I, I know what could happen, but then I just let that fear go and just keep stepping ahead and keep looking ahead. And with every success, it just builds on more successes. There's still always this shadow of fear that hangs over me that everything's going to fall apart at some point. But I can't live my life that way, you know? There's just too much to do.